West Bank to voice their anger at the violence in Gaza. It ended in clashes with Israeli soldiers, which left two protesters dead and dozens wounded. Harry Fear is in Gaza for us, closely following the situation. This is the largest rally we've seen in the West Bank. Of course, Gaza and the West Bank are geographically separated, but it appears that the purpose of these uh, demonstrations is to send a very clear message that even Palestinians in the West Bank are largely affected uh, at a societal level uh, by the ongoing violence here, which has been, of course, extremely bloody. Last night, at least two Palestinians were killed and up to 200 injured. As there were these clashes, we saw Molotov cocktails and fireworks being fired at Israeli border police uh, as well as the Israeli troops. Uh, they responded with, of course, stun guns uh, and tear gas. Um, so this is surely uh, an important benchmark of how bad things are getting in Gaza than in the West Bank we're seeing such, uh, such an escalation of clashing there. Literally where we are approximately five minutes ago, uh, there was an airstrike about 600 metres directly behind where I am now. Uh, within about five seconds of that strike being visibly heard, a piece of shrapnel that I'm holding in my hand right here, it's burning hot right now, landed literally four metres away from me, just in front of this international hotel here, one of the most expensive international hotels, an area which is meant to be extremely safe in the Gazan context. So you can see here that, of course, things are not lightening up by any means. Uh, there is some unconfirmed news that Hamas may accept uh, United States Secretary of State John Kerry's proposal for a ceasefire, but that's not yet confirmed. And obviously the ongoing strikes continue here in Gaza. Well, yesterday we saw a very significant incident where a United Nations-run uh, school was being used as a shelter, and this was struck allegedly by Israeli tank fire in one way or another. We understand that at least 15 were killed, including two children and United Nations staff. The United Nations said that it's given Israel historically the GPS, co GPS coordinates of all of its infrastructure in Gaza deliberately to try and prevent this kind of uh, civilian object uh, being hit. But this didn't happen, and yesterday this school building was struck. It was home temporarily to these hundreds of thousands of internally displaced persons, as almost 50 percent of the territory of Gaza has been labelled by the Israeli military effectively a no-go zone, or if you go here, you're likely to be killed zone. So the situation continues to be dangerous, even in the safest areas of Gaza, as the body count continues to rise. Now over 800 Palestinians killed. Meanwhile, Hamas continues firing rockets into Israel, with many reaching as far as Tel Aviv. Paul Aslia witnessed Israel's Iron Dome interception system in action. The alarm is just sounded here in Tel Aviv, so we're going to join the crowds as everybody starts rushing to go towards the bomb shelter. So the way to the bomb shelter is this way. You can see that the, star, the people over there have come out of the building. No one's ever sure there. People over there are walking to go towards the bomb shelter. There. You heard that bang? That was the Iron Dome intercepting the missile. You can actually see the white smoke over there, where it left a trail as it made that interception, and there's some white smoke over there. Let's just go to the edge. The safest thing to do is to actually get out of the car and to go to the side of the pavement and wait there. They reckon that the Iron Dome anti-missile system intercepts around 90% of rockets, but the fear is for the 10% that it doesn't intercept. This shows you that even as the Israeli ground offensive advances, so here in the center of Israel, in Tel Aviv, the rockets keep flying. Policy RT.